Good afternoon. Um, yeah, I don't have an opening statement. I'm just we're uh, excited and ready to go for this training camp. Mickey, Questions? Could you uh, explain the uh, put Mike Thomas on the physically unable to perform list, the, the decision making that went into that? Yeah, he's just look. I don't expect him to be on there very long, but um, just not quite ready to to be full go yet. So, but I don't I don't anticipate him being on that list for very long. Would you describe this as a setback? No. No, not at all. Mickey, do you envision um, what Dennis Allen can have the first uh, season like Sean Payton? Boy, look at the expectations where we were after Katrina and then ending up in the NFC Championship game. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, I think, I think that for the last, uh, what is it now, 16 years, we've had high expectations virtually every season since 06, right? I, I think all of us would say we didn't have many expectations in 06, but after that, we've had high expectations, and, and I like that. I think Dennis likes that. Um, our team likes to have high expectations. Um, and so we have high expectations for this year. Mickey, you said you're excited about training camp. What do you enjoy the most this time of year? Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, man, I just I enjoy all of it, really. I enjoy. You know, we got young guys trying to make their mark. We've got uh, veteran players trying to, you know, hang on. We've got got guys that are, uh, um, you know, trying to reach new plateaus each year. And, and man, I, I I just I love seeing people that work hard, um, that are great people have success. And and you can you know this is a, a, a sports I think or one of the uh, industries where. You know, you can see that and you can measure it. And, and, um, and then the rewards that come with that are all, they're all exciting to see guys achieve their goals. And um, so I, li I like that most about, uh, um, particularly about training camp when guys are trying to improve, trying to make their mark, trying to, you know, establish their roles. Um, so that, that's, that's fun for me. What have been some of the differences you've seen in maybe the way Dennis organizes things and how it's shining? Um, yeah, I, you know, I don't know that I've gotten far enough along to kind of, and I haven't thought about, hey, what's different. Uh, their personalities are a little different. Um, but remember, Dennis has been part of this for, you know, 12 of the last 16 years. So um, I think if you ask him, and you can in, in, in an hour here, he would say that a lot of what he does he's taken from, from Sean Payton. So there's a lot of similarities. There's more similarities than differences at this point. What, what stood out about Matt Ray's approach just so far in the conditioning and, and some of the different maybe ideas that, that he's brought? Yeah, I just I think there's just some science that we haven't seen here before. And, and um, you know, I think our guys in particular have taken to it. And just what about that science was appealing to you guys as, as a team? Yeah, I, I, I think, look, you're always looking for something new and, and, and uh, to create an edge and um, that has some demonstrated success. And, and, you know, we saw that with, uh, you know, the success he's had at the college programs he's been with. And so we're hoping that transfers to the NFL. Mickey, what do you guys like about the veteran running back you just signed in Malcolm Brown? Yeah, I, um, look, he's had success in our league. Um, we had great evaluations on him, you know, coming out, and he's he's you know he's an experienced veteran player that looked good in his workout, and and um, you know we'll give him an opportunity. And with, kind of, that, sorry. and with that running back room, has there been any updates on Alvin Kamara's situation? No, there's nothing. There's nothing new at this point. Does he have to be excused next week to to go to it? Yeah, I I don't know that we have an answer for that yet. Um, I don't think he has the answer for that yet. Was signing Malcolm Brown because of the uncertainty in that room? No, I, I think that, look, we're just looking for, you know, competition. Here's a veteran player who's a good player. We have good evaluations on. And, and uh, you know, wasn't the only guy we signed today. We signed uh, uh, an offensive lineman and we signed, uh, I guess we signed the offensive lineman yesterday, technically. But we, we have an offensive lineman and a defensive end as well. So we're always trying to, uh, you know, improve the roster. And, and this is part of it. Mickey, every, every player that was not already announced on the pup list the other day, that means they're good to go. Everyone else is. No, I think we're going to have, look, Marcus Davenport's going to go on that list. Um, um, 
Mike Thomas is on there, and Rashid Shaheen is going to be on there. Um, I don't anticipate those guys being on there for a long time, but they'll be on there. We had two guys that were non-football illness today, not injury, um, that were just sick and couldn't participate. So they won't be long for that list either. And can you characterize Thomas in any way? I know you don't want to put a date on it, but a lot of people are wondering, oh, no, he's still not ready. I'll, he'll be off that list soon. That's my anticipation. Taysom well, Mills that's what I anticipate. Taysom Mills is ready to practice. Who? Taysom. Taysom's ready to go, yes. Marcus May, ready to go, yes. Did everyone else report today that was expected to be here? Yes. So to clarify on Kamara, you guys don't know if he's going to make an in-person appearance at court or I not? Don't, I don't no. know, no. Nikki, I, I guess you always want to have more players, but looking at the totality of the offseason, how do you feel about addressing your primary needs yeah. coming out of the last yeah, I think, you know, I, I've said this before, every year we, co we go into the process of the offseason with musts, needs, wants, and uh, I think we did a good job of, of uh, certainly filling the musts um, and the needs. Some of the wants maybe um, we didn't quite get there, but, but um, yeah, I, I think I feel good about the competition that we'll have and, and hopefully the end result at each, at each position. Nicky, what are uh, the expectations uh, for Peyton Turner, you know, first rounder of 2021? You know, you've always said in the past, you know, you always have to go back to meet him. Yeah. Like four years or whatever. You appear to just five games, but uh, I was looking, what, what, three tackles for loss, a sack in his first NFL game. So you can see the skill set. What are the expectations? Yeah, look, I would say we have high expectations for him, and yet we recognize that, listen, he, he had some, uh, you know, injury issues last year, and, and hopefully that's, that's – uh, He's overcome that. He looks good. He's had a good off season, I think. And then, um, but we have high expectations for him. And um, yeah, I, I think oftentimes what our expectation is is that second year you're going to see uh, a jump. Um, and we had that with Cam Jordan, if you remember. Um, we've had that with a number of players over the years. So I think our expectations for year two are, are generally higher than they are for year one. Would you say the same thing for Pete Werner, who's now basically he's going to be one of your stars? Yeah, I think I think the same thing. I think, listen, I, I would say that we saw some um, some market improvement as the season went on last year because well, Pete was able to get on the field and, and, and play a lot of football for us. And so, you know, we're excited about him and excited about the prospect and, and excited about his improvement going into year two as well. And, and remember that, look, there's – you know, we've got guys that, you know, are three years removed that haven't had a real off season yet. Cesar Ruiz, this was his first one, right? Um, because of COVID and, and because of his rookie year. So there's some expectations on some of these guys that with, with a full off season, um, with the experience that they've had with us, that, that we're going to see some jumps in, in performance. Mickey, you mentioned with Mark Stavenport likely going on the PUP. What are you sort of for in his rehab? I mean, it's obviously it's an yeah, unusual thing. Yeah, I, I think for him it's, it's really more about just conditioning because he wasn't able to do some of the things in the strength and conditioning program that the other guys were able to do. So a lot of this is caution. It's, it's you know, we have these uh, roster avenues to, to uh, proceed slowly. And so in his case, that, that, that is the case. But as far as you know, the injury shouldn't once he's yeah. fully up to speed, shouldn't no, have No, again, right? this is this is more about uh, about uh, his physical condition than it is about the specific injury or injuries that he's had. Thank you. What was your your comfort level with with, uh, with Jameis coming off that injury? Like when you're you're signing to that, that extension, yeah. Has he kind of met yep. or even exceeded kind of what you were hoping? To yeah, I think he's hit all the benchmarks and and. Uh, yeah, I, I, we feel good about where he's at physically, and 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 uh, look, we're going to proceed with caution with him, but but he's going to be out there practicing, and and um, you know we'll monitor the reps, but but I feel uh, we feel good about about where he's at with his knee. Do you think it's maybe easier for a player like him to make growth in the system during training camp when he's feels confident about his spot as opposed yeah. to maybe battling, not yeah. afraid to make mistakes, things like that? Yeah, I, I think you know, look that that. That's a better question for him. But yes, I would say that, that um, look, when you know your role, 
regardless of what it is, and you can focus on what your role is, then then um, and that you and you're comfortable with that, then obviously you can you can uh, uh, get more comfortable and, and improve. You know, based can, based upon you know that. The back of the quarterbacks that you dealt with, you look at Andy Dalton, like 160 starts, and just watching him at OTAs and minicamps, it seems like he's been here like four or five yeah. years, not just this off season. It's yeah. Because of, well, where is he rated like, when you look at all the back of the quarterbacks? Yeah. You know, well, look. You remember we had Mark Brunel, and so right. you know, man, there's there's a uh, that's a security blanket, <laughs> you know, when you have someone that's been in that fire, and um, isn't going to get rattled, isn't going to get, um, you know, shook up by any circumstance. He's seen everything. He's been in everything. And look, that's a, that, you know, when you have that guy, um, he's such a great help for the starter. And, and uh, look, I'm confident we can win a lot of games with Andy Dalton if, if uh, um, you know, if something happens. And, and so... Yeah, there, there's it's a real it's a real good security blanket to have when you have an experienced uh, backup player that that has been a starter in our league and been successful. Mickey, when you were roster building this offseason, when we were, yeah, the whole, the whole group, yeah, yeah the whole collaborative effort. Uh, <laughs> you you were how much did you take into account timeline, like the maturation of your roster? Yeah, how much did that go into effect of this team? It seems like a veteran team. Yeah, I, look, I think you pay attention to it in the sense of, okay, you know, Pete Werner is a good example. You know, you pencil him in as a starter, and we know a lot of things about him, and yet we have an expectation that that there's going to be some improvement. And, and your confidence in that is, you know, based upon your experience with a particular player. Um, so, yeah, that, that's part of the equation, certainly. Well, what I meant, I'll probably... Yeah, you didn't. Is this roster built to win now? You know, you hear that a lot. Well, yeah, a good question. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we can. Um, I think our team feels confident in 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 um, our ability. But you know, that there's so many variables that go into a season. Um, but yeah, we, this is the best way to describe it. So. Yeah, we think we can win now. Mickey, looking at uh, the history of the Saints, even before you, it just seemed like I never heard the fans be more optimistic about the cornerback room. That we might have the best group of cornerbacks in Saints history from top to bottom. Um, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. Listen, I, again, we like our group. We, li we like, uh, you know, Paulson was, um, man, a great surprise. Sort of surprise. I guess the surprise was that he performed so well so early. Yeah, um, I think we, we all saw talent. Um, and having Bradley Roby and him wanting to be back and be part of this and, and Marshawn's development and and, uh, and there's some other guys that that you know we, we kind of like that are under the radar. So yeah, I think it, it, it's a good room. It's it's um, I th yeah I, I think we have a lot of a lot of guys there that can play. Um, and play good football for us. I don't know about you know history and, and look. At, there were, I can recall some good corners here. You know Eric Allen, right? Um, yeah, but I thought the whole group. Alex Molden. There, there were some guys that were good players back in the day. That, uh, and I'm sure there's more. I'm, I'm just throwing a couple of names out that I vaguely remember. Do you remember the guys you played with? They were. Are you yeah, saying they were no good? good. Uh, <laughs> they were good. <laughs> 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 yep, I got it. Yeah, no, I, I, we've got a good group uh, uh, and a talented group, yes. Mickey, speaking of, of Marshawn, uh, I think we probably take him for granted a little bit, but when you signed him to that deal, how gratifying yeah. was it? Uh, well, we signed him to a deal that didn't take him for granted. <laughs> yeah, how gratifying was it to see him have you know, one of the best seasons, yeah. the best he's had yet? Like, you kind of had a recent track record of that, but I mean, yeah. to, to see him take that next step. Out. Yeah, I, look, it's always a concern that when, when, I, when someone gets a contract, you know, do they exhale and maybe relax a little bit and their performance uh, um, dips. But look, we've had a lot of guys respond really well when they've gotten, uh, gotten contracts and that, 
That speaks to their character, and again, that, that speaks to the evaluations that that uh, you know our scouting staff do in terms of character and and uh, what's important uh, in terms of motivation. So, yeah. Do you, you lose a player like Marcus Williams? And now you have Marcus May. It seems like it's a win-win uh, both situations. But obviously, with the Achilles injury. Yep. But then the death there, you have to be pleased how well T.J. Williams. Has, yeah. Uh, yeah, and and uh, yeah, PG, it's good to have players that are versatile that can that can fill multiple roles. And you know, I'm anxious to see Marcus. He's coming off that injury. He's he's ready to go. Um, you know, we'll be we'll be smart and cautious with him as we go along. But um, you know, it was tough to lose Marcus Williams. You know, it's tough to lose somebody you draft who performs well. And and you know, like I've, I've said in the past, sometimes you have to make choices relative to. You know the resources that you have, but but um, it's good to have him and, and Tyron off obviously um, to fill the roles that that uh, Malcolm and, and Marcus uh, did for us so well in the in the past. Wait, do, you guys, do you guys see Alante Taylor as someone that can play inside outside? Do you, do you guys kind yeah, of I think we're going to find that out here um, as we go along in camp. Will Lutz having him come back because yeah. it was revolving door early in the yep. year. The consistency that he had as a kicker was yeah. tremendous. Everything okay off season wise, ready to go. Yep. Yes. <laughs> and it, it is, you're right. It it look, it's just unexpected when your kicker gets hurt and then you have an expectation he's gonna be back after a few weeks and then there's a setback and and then out all year. That that's a tough that's a tough deal to to uh, um, handle on the fly, which is kind of what we did. Um so it's good to have him back and feeling good and, and ready to get back to uh, a stellar career that he's had to date. Mickey, for, for so long, the team's personality seemed to start with Sean's offense, especially with Drew running yep. it. Not just because Dennis has taken over, but has the defense kind of become more of the personality of this team just because he's gotten so good recently? Yeah, well, I, w I would say, first of all, I think for the past 16 years, 15 years, whatever it's been, the whole team has taken on the personality of Sean Payton, and, and, and that's been a good thing. And, uh, um, you know, I, I, I think that your teams do take on the personality of your head coach, and so we'll see how that evolves. And, and Dennis's personality is different. Um, but in terms of being aggressive and, and Playing to win, all those kinds of things. I don't. I don't expect that to change, but but we'll see how that evolves. How would you describe Dennis's personality? Um, man, he he's a. I would say he's a grinder. He's he's you know, set jaw. He's old. A little bit of an old school soul. Um, tough, tough minded. Um, maybe a little more conservative. We'll see. You know, as he as he uh, um, takes the head coach role, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm anxious to see how that goes. The, this is, as much as you guys want to kind of emphasize continuity this, this offseason, how important was it for you to get Pete back in his play calling role? And yeah, that was important. Um, I, I saw something recently that talked about his success as a, as a coordinator over the years. And it's really, he's got a remarkable uh, resume uh, for the last 16 years. The number of times that we finished first and second and and uh, and I don't think he's ever gotten enough credit um, for his role in our offense. And and uh, hopefully he does. I mean, look, the year he called when Sean was out and he called all the plays and ran the uh, offense without Sean, we were second in the league. And and um, yeah, it just it just speaks to his ability. And so it was really important for us to retain him. Mickey, since. Uh Coach Payton's still, uh, Sean's still on the contract. And uh, are you expecting a better measuring stick maybe to get the calls that uh, the Raiders were able to get from the Bucks with John Gruden? Is that a measuring stick? Or how do you work that out that to say you know, he's still on the contract and another team uh, won't show? Yeah, I haven't really thought about that much because I don't think Fox uh, Sports is going to give us anything for <laughs> for Sean. <laughs> so, you know, look, when the time comes, you know, we'll deal with that. But um, if there's something to deal with, but I haven't, I haven't spent a lot of time thinking about that, Bobby. It, there's too much, too many other things that we have to deal with. Um, and it's not productive until there's something real out there. 
Um, yeah. What else? For all the continuity that's in the coaching staff right now, a new face like uh, Cody Burns yeah. has joined. What stood out about him so far? Yeah, look, his energy, he's, he's you know, it's a fresh set of eyes and, and great energy and uh, just a new approach. And um, yeah, I've been really pleased with him. Um, we've got, you know, we've got a core group of young uh, assistants on our staff that, that uh, you know, people don't talk about or hear about, but man, they're really sharp, um, good football minds, you know, great motivation. There's, there's man, I, I can see a lot of guys on our staff that I see great futures for. Um, and Cody's one of them, certainly. Kind of in that same vein, uh, Bicknell, who came over from Cincinnati, yep. his work with transitioning wide receivers from college to the pros, and now Chris Olave is going through the same transition. Was there any calculation there in terms of his ability? No, I think we just saw a, an experienced, really good football mind that, that could uh, work with Pete and help Pete and has great synergy with him. And, and um, yeah, we're glad to have him as well. I'm glad you mentioned him. Um, what else? Mike? Nobody? Doug, you got anything? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Were you responsible for the black helmets? Um, I don't want to take credit for that, but I've been an advocate of a black helmet for quite some time, yeah. So I'm not taking credit for it, but... Yeah, do you like them or you, you hate them? Yeah, like, yeah. So you, are you asking if I th am taking credit or blame? Which one are you asking? Uh, credit. 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 You like them? Yeah. Who likes them? Like, yes. You like them? Like the fans like them. Yes. They do? Like yes. Good. Yeah, I, I, I like them too. It's something a little different. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Especially now that I know they like them. Look, and speaking of fans, listen, I, I, I think, I hope that, Bobby, you, you know, you said there's a lot of excitement um, around town about our team. Look, I hope that manifests itself with the attendance at training camp. We need, we need a full um, field out here with fans because that improves our practices. And I think, I think especially with some of the new guys that we've got that aren't familiar with our fan base, that uh, that would be important. So I, I'm, I hope you guys encourage. I'm encouraging um, all of our fans to come out and, and be as loud as, as they normally are. So thank you all.